And I want to talk about, obviously, great Epiphone signature you got here. We talked about it. I think when we talked uh, pandemic, what, three years ago? Yeah. I was at prototype stage because this was June 2020. Oh, my God. So now this is <laughs> out there for everyone to buy. Yeah. But I want to get into why you chose a semi-hollow because clearly uh, feedback and noise, you're not afraid of it. No so way. So it's like you embrace it. It's part of your sound. Dude, it's part so of the sound, yeah. So explain why the semi-hollow and talk me through your specs on this bad boy. So the specs, um, it's based on a Sheridan, because I used to play Sheridan. I played Sheridan for years on the road. And so that's why it's, you know, that's a semi-hollow 335, but the configuration on the controls are different. So it's like not a four knob. There's a master tone um, and volume knobs here. Um, these are low output Alnico Pros, Indian Laurel Neck. Um, the headstock is smaller than the Sheridan. Um, there's lightning bolt inlays and diamond F holes. Love that. Yeah, it's because, you know, I mean, you can't go into a shop as a normal everyday person and drop 10 grand on a Trini Lopez. What are you, are you serious? Something. You can't? <laughs> I can't, dude. I'm if you like, don't have debt, you're not an American. <laughs> that's, that's true, dude. Rack them up. Yeah. But yeah. Add to cart. <laughs> yeah, dude. Add it to cart. Um, but yeah, I, I, I wanted to give Epiphone players the, the chance to be able to have diamond apples because it's cool. It's yeah. like fierce and it's like, you know. I'd rather spend 900 bucks on something with diamond apples than, you know, r ruin my entire savings account. So well, let's go back in time. What got you to the Sheridan in the first place? Why? Why did you grab that one off the wall of the many guitars that you could have gravitated towards? Because um, it was the closest thing to the Lucille that uh -huh. BB King played, and I got really, really into blues in college, and um, it was what I could afford as a college kid. Yeah. And so I was like, that's the one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I played that thing forever, and I, I still have it. It's in like the back of my closet, and it just it just looks like it 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 needs to retire. It's yeah. so beat up. Like I tried to play it the other day, and I, it was like, please stop. Was like, <laughs> it was begging for it mercy. Was like, no. <laughs> like, no more. But anyway, that's I mean that's how this was born, and um, I I I love playing it. It's so much fun, and it just feels like a part of me. And then. Um, I've also got my signature on. This is actually the, the first prototype, so oh, okay. the signature is gold, but on the, the models that you can buy, it's black, like matte black, so you can't really see it, which is great, because personally, I don't like to play signature guitars, you know? Except if it's your another, own. Except my own. Because <laughs> like when I go into a music shop and I see like a signature guitar that's obviously someone's signature guitar, I'm like, that's not mine. Yeah. You know? That doesn't feel like me. That's somebody else's sound. So I wanted to like give people the opportunity to play something that felt like their own. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of that. It's got age brush I love the hardware. age hardware, yeah. And yeah. the pickup cover, Sue. Trying to make it look a little more expensive than it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, going back to the semi-hollow, how did that inform what became the Emily Wolf sound? Because, you know, like you said, you're not afraid of noise. You want the feedback. So how is that part of what you do on stage and have been doing since, you know, college years? Yeah, it, it really came out of a lot of touring and a lot of experimenting. I front a three piece band. So there's not there's like so much ground to cover sonically. Um, and if I had like a single coil strat or like a telly or something, I couldn't get like the, you know, It's like real there's so much sustain and body in it and it just like it covers the whole mid-range spectrum which is like my responsibility as the only guitar player yeah. in the band so i mean i i mean it's it's funny because people are like that thing's so big i'm like yeah that's what i want yeah. i want a heavy and a big guitar because i want to wrestle with it on stage like i mean i want to just like you know make it hurt like the other one I had. <laughs> I Soon enough, why. this one's going to be moaning and groaning. Yeah, it's going to give me two years and it'll be like, please. Put me stop. down. <laughs> but I don't know. That's why. I mean, and I love humbuckers. So um, talk yeah. to me about how you landed on those specific ones, because I know between Epiphone and Gibson, they have a, law, a big line of humbuckers. So how did you get to those 
El yeah. Nico Pros. These are based on the stock pickups in the Sheridan. Okay. So, and the reason why I like these is because they're pretty dark. And like, I know a lot of people like, you know, they want like a clear pickup and like really clear. But for me, like personally, my taste, I like a dark pickup because I want to get my tone out of my pedals because I love pedals. So this to me is like a paintbrush. The pedals are my colors okay. and that's my canvas. And so if the pickups for me are too bright, it's like, it just, it doesn't, it like pierces my brain, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, when you go to a show and the guitar player's tone is just so gnarly bright, like I have to leave the show. You so. don't go on Broadway because okay. <laughs> uh, that is the king of the ice pick tone. Dude, I can't. Which is great. We love country guitar. Love it. Dude. But, uh, you know, we love John Bollinger too. He's a country guitar master, but <laughs> it's ice pick to the brain. Yeah. And I can't do it. I mean, like I would rather add brightness to a darker guitar than try and take away so much brightness because it's like it just like it kills me man and like especially because i play a bunch of different size venues like sometimes i'll play venues at this size sometimes i'll play stages that are literally the size of my board yeah. and like i have to really like kind of work with the way the sound is set up because at this stage in my career i i can't take a sound person with me on the road yeah um, and so I'm at the mercy of the sound person and what mics they use and what the floor, if it's concrete, if it's brick wall, if it's like a warehouse, like the, the environment really affects the tone of things. And so if I show up with something darker, then I'm kind of safe. You know, I'm not, I'm going to avoid You can that. build from that. Yes. Yeah. But we have a, a, a new arrival, we'll say, yeah. that everyone's probably seen and heard. Yes. But let's uh, talk about this white beauty. Yeah, this is... Um, the white wool, and the finish is aged bone white. So it's kind of like a matte white. Um, the White Walker edition. Dude, hell yeah. <laughs> I should have got like blue, like piercing blue. Oh matte. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then like GOT, yeah. like Game of Thrones. And <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, I just have this in drop C. Well, it's not really drop C, it's a really weird tuning. Well, explain. So it's 12 to 60 gauge strings. They're Diodario drop C's. And um, so the tuning is C, G, C, E, A, and D. Um, is that song based? Like I'm sure there's certain songs you use totally. for that. Yeah, so the, like, like there's a song off my record coming out this fall called Road to Ruin. And it's really gnarly, but it's like. <laughs> And then like the riff for the single that just came out last week, Walk In My Shoes, it's like. So. Am, am I talking to the Queens of Stone Age now? Are you Josh? I was, I was going for it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was going for. I was like, all right, if I could put my vocals on some Queens shit, like, let's go. So um, that was the goal, you know, to make a protest anthem with, you know, liberal kind of underlying tones yeah. about um, bodily autonomy. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, rope in the Queens fans, rope in the, the, the Guitar, rock fans. Yeah, and be like, get the riffs. There's a message, though. <laughs> you know? But so, cover them in a big warm blanket of riffage. Yeah. Yes. And everyone's dancing. And then we're all free. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Now, yeah. is this spec-wise the same as the the black one? It's the exact same guitar. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, but you know, I wanted to throw like I I was like, can I get this thing to hold the drop? See, I did have to file this slightly to get the C. Oh, the bigger strings. gauge string in there to sit, but I mean, it works. So nice. <laughs>